Mommy, you're home. Hello, darling. I'm sorry, Mommy's late again. It's okay, Mommy. What story would you like to hear tonight? Can you tell me the story of the oracle again, Mommy? The story amazes me. Okay, let's get you tucked in and ready for bed. Okay, Mommy. Ah, here it is, the Oracle of Delphi. Once upon a time, there was a sacred place for all Hellenic people. This place was known as the Oracle of Delphi. Its origin dates to the clash between Apollo and the serpent Python, which was sent by the goddess Hera to pursue Leto who was a lover of Zeus and mother of Apollo and Artemis. After defeating the terrible viper, Apollo decreed that on the spot, a temple would be built in his honor and indeed, the edification was established. Apollo was also considered the god of prophecy, and due to his mythological origin, the sacred oracle of Delphi surpassed all the others in terms of prestige and devotion. The oracle really existed and was the main religious center for the ancient Greeks, generals, kings, and noblemen consulted the oracle before making any important decision whether it was feasible to do so. No war, alliance, or colonizing expeditions happened without listening to what the oracle had to say before them. There was a subterranean chamber inside the Apollo's temple in which only the Pythonesses, who were the temple's priestesses, could enter. According to the tradition there, they inhaled the gases emanating from the buried body of the python serpent. These gases in Apollo's gift gave the pythons the power of prophecy. Before asking the oracle anything, the visitor went through a process of purification. They had a sacred fountain to clean themselves which contained the following inscription for the good pilgrim. A drop is enough for the bad and not even an ocean could remove his stains. Then it was necessary to offer a sacrifice to the gods. A lamb or a bird would have been killed and then a priest searched their bowels trying to find divine signs. The question posed to the oracle was written on a clay board and delivered to the Pythonist. Inebriated by the gases, the priestess went into a trance and began to mumble cryptic words. These words were written by the priests. The answers delivered were usually enigmatic, mysterious, and often difficult to interpret. Nevertheless, the people of that time stated that the prophecies had a high degree of accuracy, and when they were not confirmed in reality, they believed a misinterpretation had been the cause. One day, a man named Jerophon approached the oracle and asked who the wisest man alive is. The Pythia replied, The wisest man is Socrates. Jerophon, being a close friend of Socrates, told him what the oracle said, and Socrates felt obliged to seek the meaning of her remark. By questioning others who had a reputation for wisdom, he came to see that he was wiser than they, because unlike them, he did not claim to know what he did not know. Then Socrates stated, There is only one thing I know, and that I know nothing. And because of that, he truly knew himself as the wisest because philosophy begins when one begins to doubt. His reputation as a philosopher, literally meaning a lover of wisdom, soon spread all over Athens and beyond. The Delphi priests became powerful, able to ban both military and political powers. But over the centuries, Delphi and the sanctuary of Apollo suffered multiple catastrophes and changes in authorities. In 548 BC, the first temple was destroyed by fire and remained in ruins for at least three decades until an Athenian family rebuilt it. In AD 393 or 394, the Byzantine Emperor Theodosius outlawed the practice of ancient religious and the Pan-Hellenic games putting an end to the power of the oracle. 
the temples and statues of Delphi were subsequently destroyed. Christian communities settled in the area and in the 7th century AD, a new village called Kasri grew over the ruins of Delphi. Good night, my darling.